Hi, my name is John Glanville, and in this video I'd like to talk about a form of OCD that we call pure O. It's where a person has scary and intrusive thoughts, but seemingly the lack of compulsions, like uh, checking or counting, touching or cleaning things, you know, things like that. Things that are more commonly associated with conventional obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, pure O is something that I've experienced myself, and in my capacity as a therapist, I've helped many people to, to bring it under control by helping them to understand what it is and how to manage their attention and their awareness. Because you could place your conscious attention on the unconscious thoughts, which of course will scare you and stop you from taking action in your life, or you could place your conscious awareness on taking action, which will distract you from associating with the unconscious thoughts. Either way, it's not about stopping the thoughts or even trying to, to understand them. It's about learning to not be consciously hooked by them and to stop giving your thoughts um, any meaning. You don't worry about your dreams, which are often sexual or aggressive or, or just plain weird. In fact, during a, a sort of fantasy moment, you might even like uh, some of the variations of that type of imaginative thinking. I mean, who knows? So we then learn how to retrain our brain via exposure therapy, which is basically saying, how can we learn to sit with the discomfort of the anxiety until our brains are tricked into a more calm, recalibrated um, state? Of course, this is what we're doing every day with new experiences in our life. Uh, the first date is scary, uh, the second one is less scary, and then the third one, well, is fun. Our brains adapt with repetition to new behaviours. But if the anxiety is limiting your life and stopping you from doing the things that you, that you want to do, you may get caught up in a procrastination cycle. And this is why re-engaging with life and seeing life differently is key to that recalibration, although it may make you feel uncomfortable and anxious. Now, in my experience, the intrusive thoughts, they fall into the same few categories, harming or killing others, be they um, family members, members strangers, um, or even children, suicidal fixations, um, sexual Im imagery, intrusive thoughts about sexually abusing others, which, which may extend to thoughts that they may abuse children, um, even our own children, um, which of course you won't, as these are just stories that the OCD is using to scare you. Now another common topic of pure O is doubting your own sexuality, feeling that you may be gay or transgender, and then fixating on those thoughts and then looking for evidence that it may be true or not. Okay? Uh, we can then expand out the categories to religious concepts like um, blasphemy, fear of sinning, fear of being judged by God, um, fear in hell uh, and the like. Then intrusive thoughts about contamination, going mad, becoming schizophrenic, or obsessions with past lives um, or death. Ultimately though, I think the best way to classify the range of categories is by saying any story that your unconscious mind will create that will consciously scare or fixate you, thus sabotaging you from getting on with life. And these periods of increased anxiety, they seem to intensify in proportion to increased life stress, exhaustion, or times of significant change. Though in more um, adventurous maverick types, it's often triggered by boredom or feeling trapped by work, relationships, uh, or, or life. It's as if the more tired and stressed you become, the more unconscious thoughts try to scare you and sabotage you to make you withdraw from life, I guess hoping that you'll take a break um, and recharge which of course biologically is quite sensible really, though the conscious mind may want you to work or study harder, and that causes quite a conflict between the mind and the body. I think this is why learning how to accept life in new ways, or to explore the courage to release your non-conformist free spirit, are critical to sustained recovery, but so few therapists mention this, 
or teach people how to free themselves from themselves. So before I go into more detail about this condition, I think it's prudent to highlight a few perspectives that may help you to see it all in a, in a new light. Firstly, I've never come across an OCD person who has acted on any of these thoughts. Have you? Uh, no, because you're a good person. These thoughts bother you because you care. And if you didn't care, they wouldn't bother you. you know, I guess that would make you a psychopath, which you are not because you care, because you have empathy. Um, and secondly, and I think this is important, Though you think you might not have compulsions, you probably do. You certainly compulsively check your thoughts, you know, and you may have compulsions to avoid certain situations like um, babysitting or handling knives or look at, looking at uh, specific people. You may have compulsions to stay at home, to not meet up with friends. And often I think procrastination creeps into your life which, of course, is the compulsion to avoid doing things. Can you see how subtle this is? But they are compulsions. But they are more about avoiding things than doing things. But they're still compulsions. And these intrusive thoughts, they cause you to doubt yourself, uh, to seek reassurance, whilst at the same time you may feel embarrassed or uncomfortable to talk fully about the content of your thoughts. So this to leads to, to, to many conflicts with other people uh, and, and within yourself. Now pure O tends to develop in people with creative minds who tend to be a little more extroverted or who have had their intrinsic outgoing nature suppressed somehow, you know, through childhood or through events of life. Imagine you were Stephen King or Steven, Steven Spielberg. If you had thoughts about murder, rape, knife attacks, you'd be saying, wow, what a great plot for a film. I love my mind. Can you come up with more ideas, please? What a great and creative tool my mind is. They wouldn't be saying, oh my God, what if I do those things? Now, I'm not trying to mimic you or take the mickey out of you because I know this is scary, but can you see there are many perspectives? An anxious person seems to think that their thoughts are theirs, that they can control them, rather than them just being a function of the brain or the psyche or, or the ego. Can you see how your perspective plays such a key role in your recovery? Our species, they are animals attempting to live as humans. And over many, many millennia, we've evolved to suppress or deny the emotional urges of the animal within us in favor of the logical and rational musings of the conscious mind. Within us is the conflict between the human logic and the animal emotional instincts. I'm married, therefore I shouldn't be attracted to another person. Yeah? I'm straight, so I shouldn't have any gay thoughts. I'm kind, so I shouldn't be aggressive. The legal age for sex is 16, so my mind shouldn't give me sexual thoughts about a 15-year-old. Can you see this is the modern conscious logical prefrontal cortex of the brain fighting with the older, less verbal, more instinctual, animal, emotional, limbic areas of our brain who are concerned with food, sex, fighting um, and survival. So I think it, it's fundamental for us to understand and to accept that this is just how we evolved. We are emotional animals who have learned to think logically. But a person with pure O, they're living like a thinking creature who's trying to stop their unconscious thoughts and subsequently stop all the emotions. But that is just regressive and it will never result in calmness. So, when a person is ready to overcome pure O, I think the key messages to consider are, number one, you are not your thoughts. Your brain proposes thoughts, some of which are animal and emotional, and some of which are logical and rational, okay? That's just the way it is. Secondly, you won't be able to stop your thoughts completely. However, you can learn to ignore them, and you can learn and realize that you don't have to give any thought any meaning. Like with your nighttime dreams. Um, you don't give them any meaning, oh, that was a silly dream, okay? These are just daytime dreams. 
in addition, know that when exhaustion and change occur, pure O can flare up. And I think this is why many women experience intrusive thoughts about harming their child during or soon after pregnancy because they're, they're tired and exhausted. And for men, it seems to happen in the second or third year of after becoming a father, or if they take on a, a, a new very um, stressful job. It's all about emotional exhaustion from worrying too much. And the same for university students exhausted from exam stress, um, entrepreneurs exhausted from working too hard, or somebody who's in a stressful relationship. Recognize that although you're focusing on your pure O problem, you know, be that the, the sexual or harmful thoughts, in reality, these are the symptoms of your anxiety. The cause behind it all is emotional exhaustion, not living the life you want, the suppression of childhood anger or trauma, and not becoming the more extroverted, creative, and dominant personality that you know you intrinsically have within you. And as you move the focus of your awareness away from the thoughts and onto you becoming your authentic self, and then beginning to change your life, these thoughts will jump to other topic, topics, and then they'll slowly begin to diminish. We need to realize that fear is just an emotion, and emotions are natural. We are emotional creatures. Therefore, it is possible to embrace fear and let the energy of it just pass through us, not resisting it, not holding it down, not giving it any stories. Then finally, within us are the suppressed anger from trauma and adverse life events, which need to be released along with the out-of-date stories we may be running about unfairness or guilt or shame or not feeling good enough. And this is how you overcome anxiety, by thinking and behaving in new ways, by becoming a new person, not by trying to stop the thoughts or avoid avoiding your emotional fears. Now I'm just scratching the surface here. But if you'd like to know more about my recovery and uh, all I learned uh, from 14 years as a therapist working with complex OCD, then perhaps subscribe to my anxiety and OCD re recovery course, where for the price of a coffee each month, you can access all my extensive video collection and have all your questions answered. You've got nothing to lose. Why not give it a try? You'll also be helping me to keep producing quality content for anxious, for anxious people who can't afford to get professional help. Thanks for listening, and I wish you well on your journey to discover more calmness and courage within your life.